Hi, I'm Dee here at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. I'm standing in the Apollo Saturn V Center, home to the same kind of rocket that took us to the moon 50 years ago. A lot of people have asked me how long it takes to get to the moon. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about the Earth, the moon, the sun, and how far apart everything is. Let me start by showing you this model of the Earth and this model of the moon. At this scale, or at this size, the Earth and the Moon are going to be pretty far apart. The Earth's diameter is about 8,000 miles, the Moon's diameter is only about 2,000 miles, but the Moon is 10 times as far from Earth as the Earth's circumference. I'm going to let you do the math later, I've already done it, and I'm going to show you how far apart these two objects should be. But before I do that, let me see if you can guess. Should they be farther apart than that? Yes. Farther apart than that? Yes. Farther apart than that? Yes. Now you can do this with a friend. One of you can be the Earth and one can be the Moon. For social distancing reasons, I'm here by myself today. So I'm just going to set the Earth down. I wrapped this piece of string around the Earth ten times and now I'm going to let the string out until I reach the spot where the moon would be. As you can see, the Earth and the Moon are pretty far apart. It's about 250,000 miles, and that's why it takes us about three days to get to the Moon. So to go to the Moon and back is a seven-day mission. But what about the Sun? How far away from the Earth is the Sun? Well, if the Sun were this big, the Earth would not be that big. So for me to keep this model right, I need a bigger sun. If the Earth and Moon are this size, my sun is going to be the size of stage one of the Saturn V rocket in diameter. It's going to be about 138 feet in diameter on this scale. I couldn't even begin to fit that in this building, so we're going to have to use a smaller Earth and Moon. So since I can't fit that really big sun in the building, I'm going to go with the small one I showed you before. But that means I need a smaller Earth and a smaller moon. Maybe you've heard that the Earth is sometimes called the blue marble. Well, that's what we're using for Earth. If the sun were that big, the Earth would only be this big. We could probably fit a million Earths inside our sun because it's enormous. But that means that the moon is only about this big. If you've got a dressmaker's pin, the head of that pin is about the size of the moon compared with a marble. How far apart would the Earth and the moon be on this scale? Well, as far apart as I can stretch my arms. Now, how far would the Earth and the sun be on this scale? I'm standing in front of the Saturn V rocket, which is 363 feet long we're going to have to get a little bit farther away from the sun than that so that I can show you how far apart this Earth would be from this sun. So hopefully you can see the sun it's way up there and I've got the Earth and the moon but you know what it's kind of tiring for me to hold the Earth and the moon this far apart the whole time we do this so I'm just going to stick the moon in my pocket, if you don't mind, and hold the Earth right here. Is this how far this tiny little Earth would be from that sun? Nope, not yet. We're almost halfway there. Can you see the sun? Wow, I just walked the whole length of that Saturn V rocket, but guess what? We're not there yet! <laughs> I 
people have made lots of different kinds of models to try and show how big our solar system is. But it's so gigantic that it's really hard to fit an accurate model in a classroom or a home. Let's see what kind of model you can come up with. Post some pictures in the comments below so that we can see how you solve the problem of getting from the Earth to the Moon to the Sun. This is Dee at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex reminding you to have a great day and keep looking up.